Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to do just a special video here because today marks the end of the full second year I have been in this van. So if you are new to this channel and you did not know, Switch to Linux for two years has been run out of a converted van. And I did the entire build myself. So, of course, this is the cat. The other one I think is up front. You can kind of see there's the back windows, which are covered right now. And if I go up, here's the ceiling with the fan. And if I go this direction behind me here, of course, there's the sliding door. Up front is the driver's level. And up there it says the, the point of the journey is not to arrive. So I started out in van life a few years ago, and I actually got the idea, I'd actually say about five years before I started, so close to seven years now. But I had other obligations at that time. I couldn't jump on out and do van life. But since I had basically a job, I had the YouTube channel, which was generating a revenue, uh, web design work. I had to build a van unlike anything I had seen. So I was doing five years of research. I need to figure out how I can minimally impact my life in van life. This means I have to be able to stream. I have to be able to run the computers. I have to be able to do all of the things I would need to do because I didn't want to have to try and change an income while I was changing everything else. And so what I did is I started testing and poking and probing and prodding to see what various things were. And so what I want to do today is I want to show you all of the computer systems that we run. I want to talk about what they run and I want to talk about how I power those to run this channel on Switch to Linux in van. Of course, I also run, I was running a travel channel for a while and just about rules about filming in national parks that shifted back against our favor again. And just the fact that I have so many other things to do and I'm not a regular daily vlogger. I decided that that channel goes on hiatus for a bit. However, I am uploading a video today to accompany this one on that channel. So if you want to see all the different places, the coolest spots that I've seen in the 40 states that I've visited since I've been doing van life and traveling around the country for two years. And I think I only missed one live stream because of signal issues. Obviously we do miss that one in July, which all we always miss because of other obligations. Um, but, uh, I only missed, I only recall missing one or two streams. Actually, I think this last loop, we did miss two streams. We missed the one stream when I hiked up the top of Mount Rainier, uh, and we missed another one outside of Odessa, Texas. Um, so those are the only two streams that we missed this last cycle, but stay tuned here. We're going to turn this around. I'm going to show you how all my studio is set up and how all of the different components of this are set up so you can get a chance to see how a van lifer does a monetized YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and turn this camera around. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of start with a lighting setup for the studio. Since we have to have good lighting sources, what I actually have is a few different LED light bars up here. Now, um, this one here in the middle, I just bought it, just came in today, so it's not fully tested yet. But these were pretty cheap and it looked like it would solve the problem. I had a ring light up here, but the USB port was going bad. This guy here has a rechargeable battery, so hopefully it works. And then um, what I have is back here, these guys are on dimmer switches and I have top ones and bottom ones on separate independent dimmer switches. This guy also get, has a switch wherever it's at. Oh, it's, I put it down near the bottom so I can go between more white or more, um, more warm. So I actually got this as my warm balance light. And then of course I can go light or dim depending on what I need there. So that's what I do for my basic lighting. But you guys want to see more about the computers because we're all geeky Linux people. All right. So the first thing we have back here is uh, we have to have good audio. And so I'm running audio through four speakers that are built directly into the walls. Now I run this through this uh, two channel audio switch. So this guy here basically runs on 12 volt power. So I just have a 12 volt line into a DC fuse box. And then I have this switcher right next to it. And what this switcher is going to do is 
the switcher there is going to uh, allow me to choose between the first one on this is the square, the last one is the triangle. You can kind of see those. The first one runs my main media PC. The second one is my streaming PC. The third one is that loose cable, so I can plug anything into that I want. And then the fourth one is this Raspberry Pi, the one that is on the left with the Pi logo. That one runs the forbidden uh, word, um, the K word box, and that just allows me to interface with my NAS media server to play anything I might need to play. The other Raspberry Pi over there, that is actually my web design computer. Almost all of my web design work is done on that Raspberry Pi. Unless I need to do something really, really um, power intensive, in which case I use a laptop, but that Raspberry Pi allows me to actually run most of my stuff. That's a Raspberry Pi 4B, 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is powerful enough running Manjaro KDE uh, to run all of my web design work uh, for my basic job. Now, that computer there runs on this monitor on the, um, let's see, this monitor over here. So, which has uh, three different inputs. It has a generic HDMI input, it has that Pi, and it has the streaming PC. Currently, we're processing a video for the, um, for the travel channel over there. All right, so that's kind of what we are seeing over there. Now on to the uh, media PC. This is the PC over here. This runs um, Endeavor OS. And sometimes my audio mount likes to do weird things with my camera, pardon me. So this guy here runs Endeavor OS, and this guy is actually a uh, Dell Inspirian tower here. So it's this guy right up here. Now these guys are basically like minified laptop boards and they all run, the most of them I should say, run on a DC circuit. So all I did is I just found out what the voltage was, which was 19 volts, purchased myself a buck converter, and then I just convert the 12 volt battery system into the 19 volts this computer uses, and I toggle it with that little switch up there with an orange light on it. So that power switch simply turns on this computer, which runs all of my basic multi-purpose computer needs. It is fairly low power. It runs on about one amp of power, maybe two amps of power. It's not very powerful. And so that actually uh, works out pretty well. Now you can kind of see, if you can see that number, it says 3.34 uh, 3 amps, but that's at 19 volts. And as we drop that down, the amperage goes down with it. And so uh, it actually, on my actual calculation, this readout here gives me a power calculation. That actually gives me everything I need to know. So the next computer is my streaming PC, which is rednecked directly into this container here. All right, so you can kind of see how the PC is built in. Right now it's down there with some rope. I'm probably going to redo that to um, run on some... Uh, uh, run on some like bungee cords because I do need to pull it out and clean it. It is overdue for a cleaning. This guy is the only thing I have in the van that has to run on AC power. And so, um, well, I should say the only computer I have that has to run on AC power. So as far as how it runs, um, there are um, uh, basically there's uh, an inverter down at the bottom. It's a pure sine wave inverter to handle the need of the computer. And uh, it is a, I believe it is a 2000 watt inverter. So this computer will not draw a fraction of that. So we're certainly good, uh, but it works out really well for streaming stuff. Now, for those that will mention, yes, you can actually get DC power supplies for main computers. They will replace a basic AC power supply. They're extremely expensive and um, the inverter is something I need for other things in the van as well. Now up to your telecommunication stuff. And uh, that is going to be this port up here. So on the left is the uh, gray box there. That is a Fitlet PC running PFSense. So the PFSense is my custom router system because yes, all of the computers in here that you've seen are all connected with an ethernet. I have an eight gigabit port, uh, excuse me, a one gigabit uh, eight channel switch back there. So that I actually have some empty ports, but I have a ethernet 
port in the bottom of the van so I can plug any other random computer into it. Up front there, uh, the black box up front there is a Sierra Wireless AirLink LX40, which is an IoT grade internet modem. And this is connected to the roof of the van with a uh, uh, an omnidirectional antenna to give me a good signal boost. Right behind that is that eight port switch. And on the other two sides there um, is going to be a Raspberry Pi that is a onboard web server, which barely ever gets used, but it's there if I need it. And then the one in the very back is a NAS. That is my network attached storage based on Open Media Vault. All of these guys are run by the power cables in this spaghetti code up here. Uh, which runs a series of buck converters to convert from the 12 volt into the power outputs needed for the Raspberry Pis and for the various other items in here. So that is what we're doing as far as our, uh, our basic computer systems. Now, the other thing I'm going to point out here is we actually have a, um, we actually have a um, charging system for laptops. And so, the laptops back here, they generally, most laptops run on a 19 volt battery. And so down here is a buck converter, which is right here. So these lines are bringing in a 12 volt current. This guy converts that current back into a 19 volt current. And then when these two cables right here are connected, then I have a port right up here by my HDMI switcher. And that port there plugs into this section here, which are all the tips. So I have a Lenovo computer in here. I have a newer model Dell and I have an older model Dell. So those three tips, I can plug those into the end of that computer charger and I can run or charge my laptops off of my house battery. So what is my house battery? My house battery is down here, and these are the newer battery technologies that we have. Right back there, you can kind of see my power inverter. We'll get into that cabinet in a moment. But down here, these blue cells, those eight cells there, those are my uh, LifePo batteries. They are lithium iron phosphate batteries. Some of the best battery technology that we have right now. I have 200 amps of battery that is charged primarily by 500 watts of solar power. Um, but it also can be charged with an engine charger, which you can't really see. And I don't think I'll be able to get a good angle of it. Let's see. That guy right there, that DC-DC charger there with the black box with the blue edge. That charges the battery off of the engine when the engine is running. And we also have back inside here, let me get back there. Boom, that is a converter. That box there allows me to plug into, it would be basically called shore power. That allows me to plug into any 30 amp circuit and that will also charge up my lithium battery. So I have redundancy in how my batteries are charged. So hopefully that was a really good video for you to see how we can manage to do van life and YouTube channels and how we can power our van with Linux technologies, with Ethernet connectivity, with Linux systems to do a YouTube channel on the road. So again, if you want to see some of where I've been on my journey and some of the videos we've done in the past, you can go ahead and have a look at the Van Life channel, which is Tux Traveler. So you can see that we're not actively uploading over there, but there is plenty of content to keep you busy if you want to have a look at that. And I guess if enough people ask nicely, who knows? Maybe we'll see more videos come up over there. But uh, for right now, our primary uh, priority is going to be on Switch to Linux uh, and some of the other uh, web design type projects I have going on right now. And um, who knows, maybe in a year or two when I pay this van off, maybe we can relax a little bit more and do a little bit more personal vlogging, get some more videos out over there. But with that, hopefully this was a fun video for you on Switch to Linux, see a little bit of the behind the scenes, how the technology works. And I have another computer or another video like this on off-grid computing. I'll go ahead and link that down below. It gives you a little bit more of the, for some of the technical details you might want to know as well. With that, thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. 
This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.